Matias from Chile. He's a visiting lecturer at MIT of artificial intelligence and global risk. Currently working on a blockchain project for fintech for good in Shanghai. Matias, so what brought you to China? Uh, well, thank you for having me first. Um, I came to China five years ago. As you say, I'm a Chilean lawyer. I was practicing law for a couple of years in Chile and I was working in the government my last time and, and the government changed every four years. And when the world was going to change, uh, most of people in the government moved to a different country. Um, and I want to start something quite different. And I came to China to, to do a master in finance first. Um, and well, then I stayed uh, for almost five years already. It's, it's China, is, everything is happening here. It's, it's a very cool place to be. Biggest companies coming here, uh, uh, companies that start from zero to the like, huge corporations in a couple of months. And I think that as experience is, is really, um, it's really appealing for everyone uh, to experience this kind of, of dynamic economy and, and, and how everything's going on here so fast. Imagine like China only like 30 years ago was kind of like a poor country and, and, and today is, is the second economy in the world. Tell us more about what is it that you do in particularly in Shanghai. Well, in Shanghai, I have, I'm partner in a consulting company. Uh, we do cross-border investment with Latin America. Uh, we raise capital from China to, to financing um, uh, projects in Latin America in energy, infrastructure, construction, um, agriculture, etc. From your perspective, how do you see blockchain industry going globally? influencing governments such as cases like Venezuela, you know, how they're coming into trying to find a solution for the economy? Well, the, the first part of blockchain and international structure, I think more than the technology that is already impressive and in and, 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 and many aspects, uh, the idea that people are inter putting interest in, 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 in the use of database and how you can use a good database in different um, countries of solutions is, is, is a huge improvement. The idea that many people are putting money in, in develop new solutions, I think, is, is a great is a great big step. Could be blockchain or whatever is three-widget layer, no? blockchain or whatever alternative that will, will come in the future. Um, today in the world, there are so many people that don't have like legal identity. It's a big problem. I, I never heard of that until a couple of years ago. Uh, 1.1, 1 1.2 billion people in the world don't have legal identity. That has stopped them to have access to credit, to property, uh, to transactions, to the formal market of, of work. Uh, we're talking about like problems of people, the, the poorest people in the world facing, and government and getting more aware of their possible solutions and, and solutions that you can trust and solutions that are possible and in a relatively low cost. In the particular case of Venezuela, uh, um, Venezuela basically what they're doing, they're, what they did is is try to generate a cryptocurrency based on as a country is is launching the their their own currency. I think it's a it's an interesting step. Um, you see, like many countries are thinking to national it's like the national currency making it cryptocurrencies, but uh, nobody is, is is as far as I know, no, nobody nobody has has done it yet. Um, then I I think that is already a, a big step, no? Like Venezuela being a country. Uh, um, that launch their own their own cryptocurrencies. Now it's interesting in the case of Venezuela because for the pe people might know that uh, Venezuela has a huge huge inflation for the last couple of years um, that produced that during certain time people start to do mining from cryptocurrencies, not from Bitcoin or Ethereum, or Ether, uh, um, as a way to receive payment from outside. Why? The economy has so much inflation that, in general, uh, uh, people cannot buy product. Uh, today is, is, is almost 90% of the population in, in Venezuela, for what I've been reading, uh, live in, in, in poverty. That is a huge number. And, and the ability of mining it was a, a good opportunity for most of them. Um, because the government subsidized the energy, and the energy is, is, is very, very cheap. And they have an, like an average income uh, uh, every month doing, doing this kind of work. You just need a computer, 
the software and you can start to mine. Um, and for many people, that was a good solution to have uh, to be able to buy like the basic goods they cannot they cannot have because as I said before, Venezuela doesn't produce much for the internal consumption and most of what they consume they need to import them for third countries. Um, then that together with the huge inflation made it really hard for the country to import products because nobody like the, the the national currency is not enough to buy. Then many people what they are doing they were doing this mining. And in that way, they were buying directly in a, in a third country, uh, paying through bits of whatever of minimum payment uh, uh, to receive since toilet paper to, to rice, no? Uh, the vaccine good that, that they're having problems to, to acquire. This that it was like start maybe two years ago, and the government stopped to prosecute those who were doing mining because they were using or were stealing the energy from the country to make that people in Venezuela already have certain knowledge of, of Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies in general. And, and all this idea, I think, was was the first ingredient for the government to get more into the possibilities of, of Bitcoin. That doesn't happen much in other countries. Well, this can be taken as an example for other countries to move in into cryptocurrency? For sure, yes. I don't, I don't know if if in is in the if we are thinking that the currencies of countries should be backed by a natural asset. I think that is a, a in general not a good idea. Uh, but the idea that that the government launched their own cryptocurrencies uh, in replace of the currencies of the country, I, I think is is very good on petroleum or oil. I don't think in in any way will solve anything from Venezuela uh, um, because the problem of Venezuela is a structural problem, no. You have a, a, a economy that is completely dependent on on one natural resource that is is the oil. Uh, that an economy that basically when a country uh, depend only of, of one asset in general, you reduce the productivity of other areas, and that's what happened since the government of Chavez. Uh, most of the investment in, in diversified areas of the economy outside from the oil, they lose uh, investment, they lose productivity, they lose development. And, and finally, the economy depends only of one product level. Uh, then I have absolutely no hope that would improve in any in any way the condition of the country. Now, it's interesting that they're using it. Venezuela maybe is the first country uh, uh, that, as a government, create a, a, a cryptocurrency, um, de- independent of, of the conditions or, or why it happened or how it's happened or the future is going to happen. Part of the hype of, of cryptocurrencies is people are saying now governments are going to lose the power, people are going to have the power and and are going to be more free or whatever. Uh, uh, I don't think that will happen in the in the long term. Uh, governments are not going to lose their power that they have over the, over the currencies. Uh, um, the current the, the, the money supply of a government is, is, is key uh, to stabilize the economy. I don't think cryptocurrencies are going to replace uh, um, national currencies. Uh, if you say, for example, China, China has been working since last year really intensely. The, the central bank in generate their Chinese own uh, currency in a crypto in a crypto way. It's a good example for countries to get serious about how to implement cryptocurrency. In general, when you talk about money, money always have like at least three functions, no? Uh, um, um, it's, it's a medium of exchange, basically, with currency you can buy uh, stuff. Uh, I, I can be able to buy in any place. Uh, um, is currency is a store value. That means I have a currency today and I keep it for a certain time. I'm going to have a similar uh, value after after the time without inflation, inflation killing it or like without uh, volatility uh, killing it. And you need to account that is uh, currencies show the value of, of certain stuff. For example, your salary is paid uh, in, in a standard way. No? Um, when we're talking about cryptocurrencies, have the problem that they're not very good for any of those. Uh, uh, as a medium of exchange, are not very good because you need to integrate systems. Uh, so far, we haven't had a, a really complete integrate system to do all kind of uh, means of exchange. Uh, as, a story of value, as a storage of value, except for certain coins, uh, the volatility that cryptocurrencies bring 
uh, uh, is huge because it's only demand base. Uh, you don't have a control uh, on, of the money supply like today countries have through central banks. And as a unit of account, for the same reason, because the, because the price varies so much, it's really hard to standardize contracts or standardize uh, 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 payments only in a cryptocurrency and not make it an underlying relationship with uh, something more stable. No, when you see the history of, the history of the economics, in some point, o sea, in, in the past, local currencies, for example, the dollar was, was connected with gold, no? Then depending on the price of gold, no, you have, you have the price of, of the currency. After they got the standard, the next step was, okay, the price of the currency is gonna be controlled by your central authority, by central banks, no? In base of the money supply, how much money the government print and how much the mo money the government put on the street. Uh, that always, always, related with how much is the demand but there is a control over the price uh, we can argue if it's a good control or it's a bad control but in general it's a stable control and you can expect uh, what is going to be the future of a currency in a country no, you know it's not going to change too much now what happened in countries for example like venezuela venezuela have a the big problem is for all the uh, problems that the economy is, is facing uh, uh, the value of the currency have a huge devaluation, no? more than 1,000% of inflation. But that is an exceptional case. no? We only have it like in Venezuela, maybe what's happening in Zimbabwe. Uh, we have only a couple of countries where, where, the, con where the, the value of the local currency is very low or, 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 very, or very volatile. Um, but I don't think governments are going to lose all the power and how old over the economy, because not only because of the power, and I think that is very important uh, as an answer, is because the government protect people <laughs> keeping control of the value of the of the currency. No, if 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 the if the value of a, for example, if in, I'm in China, no, the relationship between the Chinese yuan and the American dollar change extremely. Importers or exporters are gonna suffer. Uh, uh, are gonna suffer this, this situation. They need to be. In general, economics is is predicted what's gonna happen. No, you expect. Uh, you have a, like a rational expectation of what is going to be the future of your currency. And I don't see that really happening uh, today uh, with cryptocurrency. And, and I don't think it's going to happen with cryptocurrencies in general, except if the government put the local currencies into, into a, a, a crypto uh, way.